Diet is the number one way to improve your testosterone levels. And I will say that this doesn't mean be a glutton and it doesn't mean that you shouldn't fast for the Lord. But what it does mean is that you need to be highly focused on your diet. However, because I'm going to spend the next month of my videos talking all about the Logan diet and how I've improved my testosterone, I'm going to make this video to tell you five ways to improve your test that have nothing to do with the foods that you eat. And I'm doing this because I want you guys to have these five things understood so that when you go on to the rest of my videos, you have these five things in check so that it actually helps you with the diet. Because it doesn't matter how much vitamin D you get, if you're not doing these five things or maybe even more, it's not going to matter. So the first thing is competition or, <laughs> or having a goal. This immediately and in the long term increases testosterone because it makes you motivated. So. If you are a competitive person, competition, fighting, or even having a competitive gym session with somebody will spike your testosterone in the short term, but it will have a long-term effect because if you compete in something, so like if you're a competitive power lifter, during the competition, your testosterone will spike because it's a high energy environment and because you're trying to beat everybody you're competing with, even though it's a friendly competition. But being competitive in general, will increase your testosterone because it'll make you highly motivated and it's a vicious cycle. You'll notice with all of these five things, higher testosterone makes you more competitive, but being more competitive makes you have higher testosterone. It's an infinite feedback loop and the opposite happens. When you lose your competitive drive, and again, you should put Christ first. I know this always gets tucked into my shirt, but when you lose your competitive drive, you tend to notice your testosterone, your energy levels will start to dip. The second thing is, being around an attractive woman. Now, this does not go against my Christian beliefs because you should have a wife. Now, some people have decided to devote themselves to being celibate, and that's a wonderful cause. The Lord will reward you. But the reason why we are meant to have wives is to be fruitful and multiply. So I'm not telling you to try to be an Andrew Tate wannabe and surround yourself with dozens of beautiful women. But what I'm going to discourage you from is hiding from women, being afraid of women. That's a common thing in my generation. There's nothing wrong with trying to, you know, flirt with a girl or, you know, court a girl is what they used to call it or date for the purpose of marriage, right? So you should want to be an attractive man, not overly showing it off, not always doing like an ab flash or whatever. I know I, I tend to pose too much, so I've cut back on it, but you do want to have an attractive woman in your life, preferably one, preferably one that you have a lawful marriage with, but... It is not a good idea to avoid women. The whole purpose of testosterone, it is a sex hormone. And it, again, it doesn't go against my religious beliefs because I'm not telling you to have sex outside of marriage. What I'm telling most of you is it's a good idea to get married. And that's the whole point of testosterone. It is a sex hormone. The third thing which kind of goes with competition, but it's different, is winning. See, not just having a competitive mindset or competing, but no matter what you win at, right? So I have a goal to get a thousand subscribers by like the next week, right? So if three people subscribe, that would probably actually help my testosterone levels. Not that I'm not that they're low or anything, but because I'm a competitive person and I completed a goal. Every time you win at something, you get excited, increases your dopamine. Dopamine testosterone has a, a pretty, I wouldn't say one to one, but there's a very high correlation there. Happy people tend to actually have better testosterone levels. If you're depressed, you might have lower testosterone levels. It's a common thing. So even if it's a ranked game of Rainbow Six Siege or Overwatch, when you win, you will have an androgen increase. They have done multiple studies on the most benign tasks, arm wrestling, or even like who can throw a football the farthest. For some reason, it increases your testosterone, which is good for you. Fourth thing is stress reduction techniques and body language. I'm going to lump them into one. So a lot of people will stand with their arms crossed. They'll be shy. They'll be nervous. That will actually lower your testosterone. It sounds like a bunch of pseudoscience, but these are self-protective, shy gestures. You're not saying to puff your chest out at people, but by being more open and being more confident, again, feedback loop. High testosterone makes high confidence, but high confidence makes testosterone. And I'm not telling you to fake it till you make it. I'm going to make a video about how that's a huge lie, but it tends to be that if you have more open body language, you probably have a better net androgen status. It's a it's a feedback loop thing, but as far as stress reduction techniques, prayer, spending time with the Lord, I'm not, you shouldn't spend time with God to increase your testosterone, but 
because it lowers your cortisol to spend time with the Lord, because that's one of the least stressful things you can do unless, you know, you angered the Lord, but this isn't, you know, Old Testament times, it would positively actually increase your androgens. That's not a reason to pray, but, you know, breathing techniques, taking some time to relax, taking a nice hot shower, getting a massage, right? Things like that will actually help you increase your testosterone. So like I said in the beginning, the reason you need to master these things, right? The reason you should probably find yourself an attractive woman and wait until marriage. The reason why you should seek out competition, preferably friendly competition. The reason why you should try to win at stuff, try to succeed, because without all of that, the diet is kind of pointless, which gets me to the fourth thing is training. Training, especially resistance training with weights or sprints, high intensity training will increase your testosterone. The best way to increase your testosterone like this is to eat the way I tell you and to lift weights. Especially if you're sleeping at least seven hours a night, instant androgen boost. There is no arguing, there is no debating that. It's a time-tested thing. Lift heavy, train your whole body, and eat protein, vitamins, and minerals like I'm telling you, and your androgens will be through the roof. You need to learn self-discipline when that happens, but it is a tried and true method. So high intensity training, resistance training, sleep. You guys seriously underestimate sleep. You sleep on sleep to use slang. Like you need to be sleeping more. Most of you undersleep, and a lot of times because you don't have a shift job. I hate jobs that are like, can you come in at 9? Now can you come in at 12? It doesn't let you get a routine, and if you can avoid it, stay away from those type of jobs. I prefer shift work, a job that's always 7 to 3, or always 2 to 10, or always 3 to 11, whether it's first or second shift. I don't recommend you work a third shift job, again, unless you have to, but first or second shift work. If you can get a routine down, I prefer second shift because I'm more of a night owl, but first shift's okay. As long as you can consistently get your sleep and you're not working a job where it's like, oh, I know you just closed for us and left at midnight, but can you come back at six? No, no, because it doesn't matter how much vitamin D you eat. doesn't matter how much magnesium you eat. Your test is going to crash because sleep is one of the most androgenic, anabolic, high test activities that you can do. The seventh thing, which not a lot of people talk about, is status and confidence. Now, I know I talked about the positive body language, but I'm going to get a little bit different with this point. See, there's nothing wrong with trying to elevate your status as a man as long as you're doing it for the right reasons. Would you say that the Pope is a man of high status? Well, he's doing it for Christ's kingdom. Would you say that a CEO who is a philanthropist who is using his high status position to donate to charities is a high status man, well, he is. Now, I'm not telling you to seek status above the Lord. Don't do that. But the Lord has put people like King David into high status positions. And I would imagine the King of Israel in the Old Testament, as, as weird as this is, probably had sky high levels of testosterone. King Solomon, I mean, like, it's what happens when, you, when you're elevated, whether God elevates you or, or what have you. Now, again, do not seek the things of this world. I want to highly emphasize that. However, somebody who is constantly struggling to make ends meet and they're not doing it for the Lord. If you sell your possessions and give to the poor, God bless you. That's not what I'm talking about. But if you're a man who wants to have a family, you need to make money. The Lord knows this. Of course, God knows that you need money. He knows that you need currency, even though it's a man-made thing. Sometimes the Lord blesses people with that. Sometimes he doesn't. But what I'm getting at here is there's nothing wrong with saying I'm in a bad position. I want to improve. So if you go from, you know, a receptionist at a hospital to a nurse, right? Like one of, one of my greatest friends that I've met on YouTube is a nurse. Obviously, he elevated his status. He's not using it to say I'm better than people. But when you have a higher status and more money and a consistent source of income, it makes your whole life less stressful because you can get things done. So if you do those five things and listen to the diet advice I'm going to give you, I'm going to tell you about vitamin E, I'm going to tell you about zinc. Other YouTubers, again, Team 3D Alpha was a big inspiration for me, but my videos are going to be different because I'm going to tell you how I do it. He gives you options. I'm going to tell you directly how I implemented his advice and how I learned more. Like he talks about zinc. He doesn't necessarily mention crab a lot. Crab is the second highest source of zinc. I've never heard him talk about crab. Crab is an excellent source of zinc. It's less practical, but we'll get into all of that. But been lifting for Jesus. I'm so glad I changed my name. 
I'm not trying to use the Lord for clout or anything like that. I'm, I really do. I'm trying to better myself. I shouldn't have been dancing and posing in a bath towel. We're not going to talk about that, but I love you guys and I'll see you.